Hi, and welcome. Today we're talking about all things GraphQL. You may already be aware that Postman can be used when it comes to working with REST, SOAP, gRPC, or WebSocket requests. But did you know that you can now work with the unique qualities of a GraphQL request in Postman? Today, we'll be exploring working with schemas using introspection, and we'll learn about queries, mutations, and subscriptions. To get started, make sure that you're using Postman version 10.10 .10 or higher. You can use Postman for the web or the Postman client for either Mac, Windows, or Linux. Let's get started. Go to the new button and click on GraphQL requests. Today, I'm going to be showing you an example using Postman's Echo GraphQL endpoint. To get started, I'm going to add that endpoint into my URL bar, and you can see that my schema is loaded automatically using introspection. This is the easiest way to fetch the schema directly from the server. With GraphQL requests in Postman, I can execute three different types of operations. The first type of operation is called query. Query allows you to retrieve data from the server by specifying the required fields. I'm going to take a look at what that looks like using this query example for hello. And I can see what data I get back from this particular server if I click on the query button. Here's the data that I get back. I can save this example into either a new or existing collection by clicking save. The second type of operation is called mutation. Mutation is an operation that allows you to manipulate the data available on the server, which you can use to create, update, and delete records. Let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to select my mutation operation, which is for creating a person. I can use this particular mutation operation to create an object type of a person that I can send that hello request to. I can add my fields like so, and then I can send this query. If I want to work a little bit more dynamically with some of these fields, I can do that by adding variables. Here I set random variables for both name and age using GraphQL and Postman variable notation. In Postman, I can also work with scripts to test this data and set and get variables before and after the query is sent. The third operation is subscription which allows you to set up a long-lived connection and updates the data as it becomes available. Subscriptions don't require a specific transport, but the most common and the one used in this example is WebSockets, where I can establish a persistent connection that allows the data to be delivered to the client as it becomes available. In this subscription example, we return a stream of hello greetings in various different languages. I can see all the messages that I've received as well as filter those messages by their responses. I hope this example shows you how to work with queries, mutations, and subscriptions using GraphQL. And that's a wrap. Here's what we did today. In this video, we worked with GraphQL using the Query Builder, and we played around with operations such as queries, mutations, and subscriptions. We worked with GraphQL variables and also looked at scripts. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Postman.